to those who would moralize, I see some the lone dissenting voices in chat. You have to realize that if you're not laughing, you're in the wrong place. Uh, it's a, it's a very, uh, and what's, oh geez, how do I even address this? So here's what happened, right? I talked about Ralph and how he turned on Nick Fuentes and how I, uh, for various reasons, um, tentatively support him in his endeavor to completely destroy America first and humiliate Nick, Nick Fuentes beyond any redemption. Uh, as far as that is concerned, I, I wish him the absolute best. Uh, there have been minor developments since last stream. Nothing as, as fun as, um, as what happened when he went to the America first thing. However, let me just sum this up real quick. Um, first of all, as he mentioned in the video, he is doing completely amnesty on all my enemies, America first and Nick Fuentes must be destroyed. So for the purposes of, uh, the Totalen Katzenjunge Krieg, he is, uh, Forgiving all of his enemies for sliding him. He is he has in, if you have been convicted for wrongdoings against Ethan Ralph in the Ethan Ralph court of Ethan Ralph, uh, you have been granted presidential amnesty, um, except for Kino Casino and PPP and Andy Worski, uh, who definitely didn't want to talk to Ralph anyways, uh, <laughs> and don't don't want to don't want to be his friend. Okay, so that's that's where we're up with the amnesty thing. As a result of this, uh, actually, uh, Godwinson shows up on his stream and he gets banned from Cozy. And Big Tech shows up on his stream to announce that he's done with America First. And that uh, um, I think he's also banned from Cozy. So Cozy is having a serious fucking issue where basically everyone is leaving their platform immediately. And uh, one the one person left who I'm kind of curious to see where it goes is Dick Masterson is a friend of Ethan Ralph, probably Ethan Ralph's the most long lasting, genuine friend at this point in time. He streams on cozy exclusively for his, um, his weekly streams as far as I'm aware. So I'm kind of curious if Dick Masterson is going to say, you know, fuck cozy and switch over to rumble, or if he's going to try to placate both sides or, or what, I don't know what to expect with that. That is the, the interesting thing about big tech is he's the one that kind of got me to fucking hate Nick Fuentes in the very recent. Like before I was just kind of like, ah, eh, they're cringe. They're kind of gay. I think Nick Fuentes is like a bulimic homosexual in the closet. Uh, but it was big tech stream that really made me hate America first. Cause I, I'm watching it and they're talking about, um, this allegation towards Jaden's friend. If you don't know, Jaden is like an ex friend of Nick Fuentes who joined, uh, the dark side and, went to PPP stream and now he's like a regular guest on PPP's Kino Casino thing. And apparently he has like a friend named Ultros and they tried to set him up as like a pedophile. But like the tweets that they allege that he made are shit that they say all the time. I, I made a thread and I'm not going to show this thread uh, on stream. And I don't want to vocalize any of the tweets that I screen capped. But there is like a very real very sizable demographic of unapologetic pedophiles who are part of America first and they have a large social media presence because Nick Fuentes needs every single person in America first to signal boost his message and promote him and try to get him onto shows and uh, basically spread awareness that he exists when he has a very limited social media presence outside of his own websites. Um, and because of this, they have a very obvious and easily trackable history where they all interact with each other. And it's very, very easy to go to any post about Nick Fuentes that's positive. And just by looking at who liked it, find accounts that are like openly pro pedophilia. They openly talk about having sex with kids. Uh, it's not, it's not even like a, a joke. Like they're, they're just all about it. <laughs> and it's, they're talk that's big tech was like laughing about this. And his chat was reacting very positively. And I'm like, Oh, so these people are just like completely masked off about this. And, uh, Fuck them, basically, which is why I, I, I'm unironically rooting for Ralph to destroy all of them. Um, and but so it's surprising to see. I guess Big Tech realized how bad it looked for him to like be talking about this and have his audience in support of in support of it because it is genuinely like stomach churning. Um, and you can see what the results are of Ralph leaving. I I kind of want to. 
I, I don't know if I made this allegory before, but I'll make it again. It's like if Nick Fuentes was like the Tucker Carlson of Cozy, you still need all these other shows to make a 24 hour programming schedule for, for Fox news. If it was just Tucker Carlson and then 23 hours of silence for the rest of the broadcast, nobody would watch Fox news and Tucker Carlson would also lose steam. But without Ralph streaming like eight hours a day, every day, anytime you go to cozy, the numbers are like fucking abysmal. You have politically provoked. who's like a 40 year old, uh, washed up hag. I have no idea why the fuck she's on cozy pandering to a bunch of young boys, but she has literally nothing interesting to say ever. Then you have, uh, like Alex Jones restreams, some guy named Brosif, who's like America first. And they all get sub 100 numbers. There's nobody on this fucking platform. Uh, as much as, as much as it's fun to like shit on Ralph and like point out how his numbers have gone down over time. He was uh, unironically, at least, uh, in some ways for a lot of the zoomers on this, uh, or the America first people on this platform, like something to put on in the background, just so that the TV is tuned to Fox news. So that when Tucker Carlson comes on, uh, they're there for that. But without without people to actually generate content for the the platform, they're just not there. It's uh, it's crazy. Um, so I I don't see how Nick Fuentes can like pull out of this death spiral. And the 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 thing is is that he thinks the death spiral is going to be, um, if there is one, is going to be like a direct hit where he does like a nosedive and then all the hardcore pedophiles who support him, uh, um with like maximum loyalty are going to flake off of his movement. That's not what it's going to be. I can tell you what it's going to be. And it's what you see uh, happening in real time is that people who value their themselves and their personal reputation and their ability to go out and network and enrich themselves and profit off what they do are going to see associating with Nick Fuentes as a liability, not because he is, pro-white or pro-catholic and or a nationalist or whatever but because he is surrounded by a fucking deviance that he refuses to denounce he refuses to tell like he refuses to tell them not even to tell them off like completely like fuck off i don't want you in the movement he refuses to even say can you not go on twitter and then tweet um i love raping kids the age of consent should be 12 and then posting like pregnant pictures of anime children and then also by the way everyone watch this nick Fuentes stream he's like saying don't he's not even saying don't do that you're embarrassing me he refuses to even address it so uh like that that is the end of america first it's not going to be oh he said you know something about the mustache man and uh waving your arms at him in a specific way it's going to be oh he's literally like scum of the fucking earth and catering to um like sexual deviance, like the only people who I guess can align with his sexual identity as a closet homosexual are people who are like sadists.